Hello, everyone. And so, um, as promised, I'm going to um, give my analysis regarding this nincompoop, this stupid neophyte, somebody that doesn't have a clue as to what he's doing. He knows nothing about the law. And it is clear. It is evident. It can't be any more blatant than what it has been so let's dive into this and i will periodically give my expressions let's go into this just make two copies of that look at it (laughs) that man know he going to jail you fool. <laughs> you ain't no you ain't no attorney. Knows nothing about the law. Nothing. And by the way, why would he take on a high profile case to this magnitude? Now watch this. Now watch this. I'm no fan of OJ Simpson, yo. I am no fan of O.J. Simpson, but at least he had sense enough to keep his attorneys on. He didn't try to represent himself. And these was two murders that he had been alleged to have done. Here's a man that kills six people and injures many, but he gets rid of his attorneys thinking that he can get his way out of this. Uh, look at your neighbor say, isn't that an utter fool? <laughs> oh, I need you to high five your neighbor and say, isn't that an utter fool? <laughs> one, two, each. You give one to each, party. Thank you. An utter fool. Ain't got a clue. What are you doing? But guess what? The prosecution ain't complaining about that. Listen, the prosecution ain't complaining about that because it was already easy given the fact that everything was surveillance. He was on he was on camera, so it was easy and it was extra easy for a neophyte to represent himself. Somebody that's a fake fighter in there with somebody that's a real fighter. No different than Hulk Hogan fighting Mike Tyson. The problem is Hulk Hogan was a fake champion. (laughs) That wasn't real. Y'all ain't saying that. But put him in there with a legitimate fighter. Y'all ain't y'all ooh. Y'all ain't saying. So what am I saying? Daryl Brooks was not legitimate. Come on here. When it came to the law or being an attorney, y'all ain't hearing me. But he was fighting against real attorneys, people that know the law. And so he was fighting a battle that was absolutely insurmountable. Y'all ain't hearing me. All right, let's get back into this. <laughs> you can turn. Sam, go ahead. I bumped up his audio just a little bit because people on So these are the police. Okay. Do you, okay, we're getting do you need started. something to talk to him for a second? Yes. Go ahead. Do you want you can turn the audio off for a second? Okay. All right, here we go. Oh, the oh she turned the audio off, so I guess I got a little time to talk. But like I was telling y'all, y'all, listen, he didn't have a chance. No different than you putting a snowball inside of a microwave. All right, good morning, everyone. The court will call State of Wisconsin versus Daryl Brooks, case number 21 CF 1848. May I have the appearances, please? Good morning, Judge. Two offer. Leslie Basie and Zach Wichow appearing for the State of Wisconsin. Good morning, sir. Please state your name for the record. Uh, Daryl Brooks, that's your name. That's your name, Daryl Brooks. You ain't no third party intervener, you fool. 
I'm here as a third party intervener in that matter. Oh, Fairness whatever. Authorized representative for my client. Please, <clears throat> spare me. I accept for value and return for value all of the charging instruments in this matter and make my exemption available for the discharge of all obligations and charges connected with this case. I do not dispute any of the facts in the charging instruments and do not consent to being called that name for the record. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me ask you, does he, does he think it's that easy? Notice he said to make his exemption. You think you gonna kill, you gonna, you're, first of all, you're on tape killing six people. Injuring many they have the, all of the exhibits indicating you, Mr. Brooks, and you think it's that easy to make it to make your exemption exempt. Excuse me, so you can get excused from this. You utter fool! How dare you make such a comment, you dumb fool! But as noted, uh, the record will also reflect <laughs> that the individual known to this court. As Daryl Brooks is present in person in custody, he is wearing street clothes, uh, specifically a suit and tie and a mask as well. And don't get safe to be in court that night. I understand, sir. But that's your name. All right, I do want to put on the record I gave the parties this morning. It's an excerpt from uh, a judicial bench book on opening statements. It's about a page and a half. Um, I thought it would be helpful to provide to Mr. Brooks, as he now let me say this. Uh, now, let me say this. Notice she said she thought that it would be helpful. In other words, it would be in his best interest. Watch this. Given that, and I think that's the appropriate thing to do, given the fact that he is not an authentic attorney. Now, if he was a real attorney, then the judge wouldn't be doing this. But she's doing this what for his benefit. No different then why she wanted him to come to court in civilian attire? Why? For his benefit in front of the jury. And so she thinks that it's helpful that she would enlighten him for what? His benefit. The problem is Mr. Brooks doesn't want the help. So what does he say? I accept value in return. See, that's ego. In other words, he thinks he knows more than the judge. He doesn't need anything to be an auxiliary to him as far as the rules and case law and, and, and you know, and structure and decorum. Why do you think he represented himself? Why? Because his ego was in the way and thought that he was a lot more brighter and smarter then not only an experienced judge, but three different attorneys on that opposite end of that table thought he was smarter than them. Ooh, touch a neighbor says sometimes your ego can mess you up <laughs> or make matters worse. Uh, let's get back into this. Gather his opening statement. You didn't hear me. Um, it has reference to. Uh, some Supreme Court rules, SCR, some case law, talks about the manner and purpose, scope, um, and other things. But watch this. It ain't going to matter because what is Daryl Brooks going to say? I accept value in return. <clears throat> now, at least the judge could say if there was ever an appeal. that he was provided he can't say that he wasn't provided anything because that is on the record so he cannot dispute any of the provisions come on here by the court because they provided him and so he has no one to blame but himself because he didn't accept and he returned it and uh, as I indicated yesterday, sir, um, the I like to call it the roadmap. Uh, it's referred to here as a framework so that the jury can better understand and evaluate evidence. It must also be um, based on the law and the evidence. Wait a minute, can I say something? And I, I listen, yeah, listen. I know I talk a lot, but so what? Y'all like when I when I say stuff. <laughs> 
But let me say this. The judge was trying. I, I think what happened was his ego was so much in the way that he didn't realize that he was actually being helped. You know, but he didn't want the help because he thought that he was, you know, it's almost like drinking alcohol. Sometimes if you drink a certain amount of alcohol, sometimes you you might your brain might be seeing something else as opposed to what is really there. So what am I saying? He didn't see help, but help was there. Mm. See, he didn't see help. That's why he kept on saying, I accept value in return, value of this document. They was trying to help him, but he didn't see it because his ego was on an all time high. Mm. His ego had too much, a little too much to drink. Y'all ain't, mm, y'all ain't saying that. <laughs> <coughs> Let's jump back in there. Since you believe is properly admissible, um, I'm going to further advise you at the time when you do make your opening statement uh, that. It not reference subject matter jurisdiction. That is. Just All right. Now watch this. Notice. Now watch this. Watch this. Notice that she's giving him pointers, right? In terms of not only decorum, but the structure. You know, uh, even in terms of the jury instructions. Now watch this. He was ill-advised to tell the jury. Watch this. According to the jury instructions. He wasn't allowed to tell them that they had the power to nullify. But guess what? He did the opposite. He was in breach of those jury instructions. So what am I saying? She's going over. Not case law, but she's going over basically the, 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 the instructions. She's giving him instructions. And so my point is, if he violated those instructions, by breaching those instructions, telling the jury that they had the power to nullify, when it's def when it's in the jury instructions not to say that, then what would make Judge Duro think that he's going to listen to what she's instructing him with this? See that? See that? And so, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking, well, what is the point of telling him this if he ain't going to abide by it? But I understand that she's telling him, telling him this for the record, just in case this goes to the appellate court. At least they can review and say, well, you know what? Judge Doro did inform him. And he did say, I accept value in return. Mm -hmm. He can't say that he wasn't informed. Mm. Despite what I know you believe to be to the contrary, it is not a requirement to be proven in this case. Um, it is not a factual or legal argument that is accurate, and therefore I'm prohibiting you from referencing that during either opening statements mm -hmm. or closing arguments. Uh -huh. Uh, um, with that, I believe for the record, is this is this the which you're referring to? This see the Watch this. page and a half is from my judicial bench book. I thought it would be helpful to you as so that you have a better awareness and understanding Watch of this. the manner and purpose of an opening statement. This is what guides me as I uh, preside over cases. Okay, I accept for value and return for value these documents. Uh, wow, did you hear what he just said? In other words, everything she's instructing him on, he's not accepting. Not accepting. So, in theory, she basically wasted her time instructing him because that's not what he's trying to follow, apparently. But in theory, she didn't waste her time because this is for the record. So, like I said before, if this tries to if, if he tries to get an appeal or goes to the appellate court. And tries to say that, that there was anything foul that was going on, he can't he can't. Because he was fully aware and instructed according to these instructions. 
And that record will indicate what he just said. And what did he just say? I accept value in what? Exactly. So this, he cannot refute any uh, mishandlings relative to this trial. Come on. I don't know why the reference to subject matter jurisdiction. In Wait a minute. When I say refute, what I'm saying is he can't argue and say that they try to do, they, they did something underhanded. That's what I meant by that. Cause you know some of y'all like y'all like to correct me and stuff. Like I be reading the comments, I be seeing y'all on here. Y'all trying to correct me. Well, guess what? For the record, let me make that correction. <laughs> All right, let's get back in here. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I wanted to rewind this because I want to I want to give an observation of something. Let's play this real quick. Yeah, an understanding it. of the manner and purpose of an opening statement. This is what guides me as I uh, preside over cases. Okay, I set for value and return for value uh -huh. these documents. Uh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. I don't know why the reference to subject matter jurisdiction in the opening statement uh, I'm pretty aware that that notice the facial expression part of the opening or closing statement uh, okay well wait a minute now i got to correct him on this now notice he used facial expressions to try to make the judge look dumb by saying i'm pretty aware not to talk about subject matter jurisdiction during an opening statement well if you got enough sense to know that Daryl brooks then you should have had enough sense to know that bringing it up in, in the first place meant nothing you should have never brought it up if you got enough sense to to not bring it up during an opening statement then how come you ain't got enough sense to stop bringing it up period because if she if the, if the state did not have well not the state because the state is, is talking about Zach, uh, 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 which Zachary, which I ain't talking about. I ain't talking about the state in terms of the state. I'm talking about jurisdiction. If Judge Duro didn't have subject matter jurisdiction, then she would have never been presiding over that case, which means that Daryl Brooks should have never brought that up to begin with. So, again, if he had enough sense to not bring that up during the opening statement, then how come he didn't have enough sense to not bring it up at all? Mm, see? And how dare you make a facial expressions to try to make the judge look dumb when you look dumb the entire time? You fool. You fool. I don't how dare you? Okay, great. I don't get why that that's wanted relevant. to make the record. Well, 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 I don't get why it was relevant for you bringing it up initially. Let alone an opening statement. So why are you why, why so why why are you trying to make all these facial expressions now? Like that's crazy to bring it up. Well, it was crazy to bring it up in the first place. Stupid fool. Clear. So I appreciate you indicating to me that you're aware of that. Even though subject matter jurisdiction. Wait a minute, wait a minute. He should have been aware of that across the board. Of course, y'all have subject matter jurisdiction. Why is he in Dodge? Because apparently, Judge Duro had subject matter jurisdiction. <laughs> Stupid. It has not been proven on the record. It don't have to be dumb. And dumb it should be it does not need to be proven it on doesn't. the record. It's it, established by the law up. and by the fact that, as my written decision indicates, uh, commenced when the com criminal complaint was filed Stupid. in this case. It's oh. conferred by constitution and by statute. And who was it? Who was the uh, complaint? Why, did, why does it? Why does it? Why does it matter? You're in Dodge. You're put away for seven thousand years. So apparently they did have subject matters. Shut up. You sound dumb. Complaint was filed in this case. It's conferred by constitution and by statute. And who was it? Who was the case? It don't matter. It don't by? matter. Because subject matter jurisdiction Sir, has up. yet I'm to be proven. I'm not going to go down this path today. I'm just advising you. You cannot reference that exactly. in your opening I mean, statement. That was something I've already. 
have the common sense to know. But. Well, you should have common sense to not bring it up. Obviously, they they do have subject matter jurisdiction. Dumb. Ooh, wait a minute. Mm, I got I got this. See, he he got my blood boiling. <laughs> I feel like I feel like my. My blood pressure is going up, y'all. <laughs> oh, he just makes me so upset. Because he says the dumbest stuff. But contradicts himself at the same time. Somebody he had the common sense to know. Well, how come he didn't have the common sense not to bring it up? Oh, no. Y'all excuse me. <laughs> oh, let me calm down. Let me drink some water. Oh. Mm, he just boils my blood. Also, subject matter jurisdiction has not been proven for the record. Also, it doesn't matter as to why you are where you are in a cage where you belong. And your mother need to be there, too. And potentially the wicked grandmother of the West <laughs> need to be there. All right. Uh, next topic. Then I believe the state has filed be proven a motion for the by the body. prosecution. The objection is noted. It is not legally sound. It's overruled. It's definitely legal. Watch this. I was looking at a, a, a video tip of you back in 2007 when you was in. Y'all, how many remember that video tip of Dow Brooks in 2007? He was in Las Vegas. You know why he was there? Because he impregnated a minor. <laughs> well, that's not funny. But the point is, is the I, I think the irony which makes it funny. The irony is the funny. In other words, ain't it funny that this man been a criminal all way back since when? But my point is, is this. Back in 2007, guess what? Notice that he keep on talking about now, it, it ought to be proven. Well, guess what? Back in 2007, he looked like he had a hairline. Mm. But he ain't got no hairline now. In other words, if I were to get rid of them tapes in 2007, let's see if you can prove your hairline today. <laughs> You want us to prove? Well, listen, subject matter jurisdiction has already proven. Given your custodial status, where are you? <laughs> Ooh, all right. Let's get back into this time. All right. Uh, uh, attorney, to I'm going to turn to Attorney Opper. I believe they filed a motion this morning. Uh, has it been pulled through? I probably just need to refresh, but man. Served on Mr. Brooks last night in the jail, Your Honor. Uh huh. Get it for the record. Uh, All right, go I ahead. You can make. I didn't. Start. I didn't look at the document. Oh well. Uh, I accept the return. For, accept for value. Return for value. The document. I didn't look. Wait a minute. All he's doing is telling on himself. He said I didn't look at the document. So why would you return something that you didn't look at? Listen. That's just as bad as me. That's just like if I told somebody, your cooking is absolutely disgusting. Well, how can I know that if I didn't taste it? Ooh, what am I saying? If he said that he didn't look at the document, but he returned it. So that makes him look bad. He can't say that he didn't receive it. He returned something that he's saying that he didn't even look at. Mm, all, that, that's what I'm saying. All he's doing as his own, be, being a pro se defendant, is basically building momentum for the state. He is the auxiliary for the state. He is the auxiliary for his own demise. He is the auxiliary for his own detriment. He is the auxiliary for his own defeat. I can go on and on. This case was already over. I think the only thing was they had to get through the process. 
They had to get through the preliminaries. That's all. It was already etched in stone. I think it's fair to say Mr. Brooks representing himself didn't do himself any favors. <laughs> I think it's fair to say that. Let's kick back into this. Got it. Um. Shut up, you fool. You sound dumb. So I don't, I don't know. Stupid. You just told I don't on know yourself. What I'm supposed to say to that. Right. You just told Red on Wallace, yourself. Attorney your motion. I'll hear from you. Your Honor, uh, we are moving to amend the information with respect to one word in the entire document. We're changing. We're asking to change the location of count 76. The information reads as it uh, reads right now. It reads at Frame Park. We're asking to change that to near Frame Park. Uh, we believe that that's a more consistent uh, statement that aligns with the testimony of victim PPP Erica Patterson as she testified in this trial. Uh, we're not asking to change any criminal charges. We're not asking to change any dates. Uh, it's, I think, a very small change in the charging document. The defendant has been on notice of the facts of this transaction. Notice he said the defendant has been on notice. In other words, they made him aware. So he can't say that he didn't, he didn't, he, he wasn't provided that information. Just like he lied and said that. He didn't receive the complaint. Well, that was a lie. Why? Because in preliminary, what happened? Attorney Perry said that Mr. Brooks was provided with the complaint. So he couldn't lie and say that he didn't understand the charter. He knew. He, he knew. And he was provided. And so just because he accepts value in return and got nothing to do with the provision by the state. Come on here. Ain't got nothing to do. And all he did was get on record that he didn't even look at it and returned it at the same time. You st you told on yourself, you dumb fool. Uh, it's reflected in a number of police reports and Ms. Patterson's exactly. recorded statement, which it's been reflected. has copies of. And so uh, I don't think that there's any grounds for a claim of prejudice. Exactly. Change, and we're asking to move forward with that amendment to the information. Exactly. Right, thank you. Any uh, position on that, sir? Um, yes. Uh, first of all, for the record, um, hurry up. There Steve. were originally two charges associated with this with this one party. And, okay. What's your point? These charges have been charged for the better part of a year. I, I feel that if there was essentially one word that needed to be changed. It had it's been more than ample time for it to be changed. Even after uh, one of the charges was dismissed, it could have been that topic could have been visited at that time for it to change. I, I don't I don't think one change in one word at this point really has any any bearing on the testimony or the actual charge. I, I don't understand. All right, all right. It, 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 let me let me say something. Now, this is a clear indication or clear example of real attorneys that give their statement as to why a proposal of something needs to be altered. And this is an example listening to him or somebody that just, you know, his rebuttal because you, 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 he's representing himself. So the judge has to give. All right. Let me weigh it out. Let me hear what the state has to say with their offering and let me hear what Mr. Brooks has to say and then me being the referee or the umpire or excuse me the umpire you know I'll make my decision based off of what sounds more cogent all right what 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 makes sense the most and so now you're hearing what he's saying as opposed to what the state had offered and what he's saying is a clear example of somebody that's given a general statement that doesn't have any uh, 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 merit, it's baseless, it's nothing to the degree of what the state is, is offering. And it's not going to change the mind of the judge because there's no, there's no merit behind it or, or to, 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 to sway the judge in his favor. He's general. If you notice, his responses is all generalized. 
The state gives a cogent answer. He gives a general something stupid. He don't get to specifics. Because he don't know what he's saying. And why a motion needs to be heard about. All right, shut up. One word. Is, is All right, shut up. You're repeating kind of, yourself. At this You're point, repeating. Kind of a, a moot point. You're repeating yourself. He's been charged like this for years. Shut up. Shut up, child molester. The language hasn't. You need to be in jail. Uh, reference to being changed before. Go back to your cell. Uh, yesterday. So what, what is the significance of this now at this point? What is the significance of you representing yourself in the absence of being a real attorney? I can argue that. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <sighs> Court is guided by uh, section 971.29 sub 2 uh, of the Wisconsin statutes which uh, provides at the trial the court may allow amendment of the complaint, indictment, or information to conform to the proof where such amendment is not prejudicial to the defendant. Uh, case law states that when an amendment to the charging document does not change the crime charge, and when the alleged offense is the same and the results from the same transaction, there is no prejudice to the defendant. State versus Wickstrom, 118 Wisconsin 2nd, 339 found at page 348. It's a Court of Appeals case from 1984. Case law. Um, Come on, also, Judge. I'd I love it. Point the parties to State versus Durango, 229 Wisconsin 2nd, 1. And State versus Gerard, 189 Wisconsin. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm sorry, y'all. Let's go back to where we were at. No, 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 no. Oh, God. Where were we? All right. I, didn't, I hit the button by accident. Uh, let's see if we can try to channel back where we were. That's Detective Casey. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, we don't want any just yet. Was this or was this it? Let's see here. It's a statute I've quoted with frequency during the course of these proceedings. Um, I listened to the state's offer of proof. I uh -huh. listened to uh, the objections made his by nonsense. the defendant. Um, in my discretion, I am going to allow Detective Casey to be recalled uh, for the reasons laid out by the state, um, as I understand. All right, so wait a minute. Let me go back because that's something different. Um, I wanted her to weigh out. I inadvertently hit the button and I went to something else and it threw me off. Uh, let me try to get back because what we're trying to do is, first of all, the state had made an offer because they wanted to alter one word. And he wanted to give his response as to why they shouldn't. And I wanted the judge to give, um, I wanted her to resolve it by giving her decision as to who she would side with, whether it be the state or the nonsense of Daryl Brooks. So let's try to find that. And uh, as soon as possible. Uh, I have a question about that. So Wait a minute. I think the same, uh, the same. Um, there is no prejudice to Mr. Brooks. It does not change uh, the charge in any way. Um, it is still the same offense. Uh, it's still from the same uh, general information. That All right. Well, unfortunately, I can't find it. But let's just listen to this. And if I have a response from something that I'm hearing, we'll just we, listen. This is going to be impromptu. <laughs> Impromptu means unplanned. In other words, I didn't know that I was going to inadvertently or unwittingly hit the button that that's going to throw me off. But we still, we still, listen, we still going to respond. Because, listen, at the end of the day, Mr. Brooks is still an idiot. And he's easily, he's easy, it's easy to debunk him. Was indicated in the criminal complaint. Uh, so for all of those reasons, I will grant the state's request to amend the, the word. information. Oh, here we are. We file that document uh, as soon as possible. Okay, so we're good. We're at the we we are right. So so in other words, she sided with the state. They wanted to alter the word, and she weighed it out. Being the umpire, she's the referee. All right. So apparently, the state got a three count. Uh, I have a question about that. So, this same uh, the same person is scheduled to testify again. What if something changes in the testimony? 
That's a hypothetical. I'm not answer that, sir. It would require me to speculate on what that yeah. situation might be and to give an advisory opinion, which I will not. Yeah, yeah exactly. That that speculation. That's hypothetical. We can't. You know, I'm, I she can't prognosticate that that will happen. You know, you're, you're, it's almost like you're asking me who's going to be the president in 2024. I don't know. <laughs> that's speculation. I can't prognosticate that. We only have to deal with the matters what at hand, not in the future. <laughs> so what happens if, if that happens? Shut up. I'm not going to answer that, sir. We're not answering. You're asking that. me to give an advisory decision. I'm not going to do that. I'm not allowed to do that, actually. Right, because she's a referee, not an attorney. Okay, so we dealt with that makes then. No you fired your. Oh, did wait a minute? Did he say yeah. makes no sense? Wait a minute. Me to wait give a an minute. Advisory decision. I'm not going to do that. I'm not allowed to do that actually. Okay, so we dealt with that makes then. Makes no sense. Did y'all hear what he said? It makes no sense. Well, I can argue and say you're not an attorney. You got rid of your counsel. Guess what? That makes no sense. <laughs> Yesterday, we do intend to recall Detective Casey you fool. to the stand, and I'd like to uh, make a record in that regard, please. Go ahead. Your Honor, uh, Detective Casey did testify once for the state uh, early in the presentation of the matter. His focus at that point was largely on... Uh, assisting the jury in understanding the layout of the parade route, um, giving background and uh, contextual information to the jury, um, the different parade units that were impacted, uh, what you know, what they looked like. We showed several videos with Detective Casey, just for background and context purposes. He then went on to describe his personal interaction with the SUV as it came through the intersection of White Rock and Maine. And uh, essentially, um, that was the the bulk of his testimony That's right. uh, during his first testimony. We're seeking to recall him now. This is not unusual. It is commonly done in cases. We never excused him from his subpoena. We never asked for right, him. Right, right. Notice she said it's not unusual. In other words, that means it's not unprecedented, meaning that this has happened before. And I think that the judge is going to comply with the state's offer relative to recalling Detective Casey on their stand. Mm. Be excused from his subpoena. We always intended to recall him. We did this so that we can efficiently present the information to the jury. Exactly. Um, the types of questions we have for him now go more to the investigation itself and his role as the lead detective in this case. That's right. There will not be duplication or repetitive questions. I'm not going back to the corner of White Rock and Maine with Detective Casey during this uh, round of testimony. We want to ask him uh, essentially about how some of the victims along the parade route were identified. We want to ask him about um, some of the topics that have been addressed throughout the course of the state's case as far as identification of the vehicle and identification of the driver and um exactly we need to still introduce the um certified bail forms from milwaukee county for the two bail jumping counts so let me let me let, can i say can i just say energy if i can interject here you know what i i i said this a while back uh, this is around the time that this case, this trial was going forth. I said that the state, I really believe, you know, they, they, it's like, I, you know what? And I have to commend the DA, the district attorney, because they strategically dotted every I and crossed every T in this case. And they did it. I feel like they overdid it. It's like they were overproving. <laughs> you know, they overproved it. <laughs> and notice that Sue Opera, like she's, watch this, they already had Detective Casey on the stand, but now they're recalling him just for like, 
augmentation of uh, of of evidence. It's like they're all they have the evidence, but they're augmenting it. No different if you had nice lips, but you augmented it with more. <laughs> and so, what am I saying? They already had this in the bag. But they augmented the evidence for the purpose of assurance. In other words, to ensure they had this in the bag. <laughs> it's almost like it's almost like if, if, if somebody if, if I shot you, if I shot you and you died, but I wanted to shot I wanted to shoot you 20 more times. Watch this. To ensure your death. <laughs> In other words, I know you're dead, but let me ensure it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so I feel like the state already knew they had him, but they wanted to ensure it with augmentation of evidence. Y'all ain't hearing me. Y'all ain't hearing me. <laughs> Let's jump back in here. We asked about that. I estimate my direct examination of Detective Casey would be about 20 minutes. So this is not um, going to be repetitive. It's information, again, that he has as the lead detective in the case. Notice, notice she said information again. In other words, let me, let me augment it again with evidence to further destroy this fool. <laughs> to assist the jury in understanding some of the things on the back end that he was involved in, not uh, his role at the parade. So we are, um, we have been very efficient in our presentation. I believe Your Honor would agree with that. Um, we're not wasting time here, but we just have a few more questions to wrap this up. And I don't find nothing wrong with that now. Let's see what the judge say. Now she's gonna get she's gonna get Mr. Brooks's perspective. You know, whether or not if it's relevant to call Detective Casey back on that stand. Let's let's hear. Right. Any position from you. Say that yes, exactly. I do. And I'm gonna start with what was just said. The um, the prosecution feels that they've been efficient in their presentation. So it, it, it seems like to me uh, an attempt to get more questions in that, that could have been asked in the first place. That if, if Your Honor recalls, um, Detective Casey was um, testifying for quite some time to the point that we actually had to have a break. But wait a minute, but wait a minute. Why, wait a minute, y'all. Those of you that have been following this case, but didn't he open the door by suggesting that how could Detective Casey identify, identify him being in a video? Wasn't, wasn't this about the still picture? I think there was a still picture of Dow Brooks. And so he questioned Casey in terms of what? Well, how is that me? This is just a still picture. My back is turned. Well, he didn't say my back is turned, but the picture showed that there was a there was a subject, but their back was turned. And so how could Casey identify that person as being Brooks? So maybe the state wanted to recall Casey on as a result of Daryl Brooks opening the door. <laughs> see, ah, see, this is where he went wrong. Come on. Before I can cross-examine Detective Casey, if you recall, uh -huh. he was up there quite some time. Uh -huh, but you opened the door. That was stupid. more than enough time for uh, any other foundations to be laid. Any any questions to uh -huh. be asked? You opened the door at that time. You opened that door. Um, and also, from my recollection, he was asked to be excused. Uh huh. So, but guess what? You also opened the door, stupid. <laughs> essentially, having him start off and then end it, 
I feel like it's. No, wait a minute. Well, I, I got a question, y'all, and, and this is for those of you that have noticed that Dar- y'all remember when at, at, at Daryl Brooks that said um, when he tried to accuse the jurors or uh, 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 one of the jurors of writing the Reddit post. Remember, he said that there has to be somebody that has intimate knowledge of the case, but he was too dumb to realize. Well, this case is being broadcast. It is live. It is on court TV. So, 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 so a whole lot of us have intimate knowledge of the case. So my point is I'm talking to those of you that have intimate knowledge of the case. Do y'all remember when, when Dow Brooks tried to debunk Detective Casey in terms of him knowing that that was Daryl in that still photo? Y'all remember that? Do y'all remember? I'm only talking to those that have intimate knowledge of the case. Do y'all remember that? And so my question is this. Why wouldn't the state want to recall? Given the fact that Daryl opened the door. All right, you opened the door. So now we're going to come in with this. Now watch this. Now here's my real point. Why is Daryl so pensive? Mm. Why is he so reflective? Mm. What does pensive mean? Pensive means he's worried. And that's in breach of the Bible, considering that Daryl Brooks brought a Bible to court. Then the Bible says to be careful. The Bible says to be careful for nothing. In other words, you ain't supposed to be worried about it if God got this in control. <laughs> what you pensive for? In other words, my question is, why is Daryl Brooks so pensive about Detective Casey being recalled or there being a request? Of the of Detective Casey being recalled on the stand by the state. Why is he so worried about that? And the only reason why I'm bringing that up is because guess what? That might debunk Dow Brooks suggesting that he never received. Now, how many remember Dow Brooks said that he did not receive the video? When the state had offered that as an exhibit to debunk Dow Brooks, suggesting the credibility of Detective Casey, knowing that that was Dow Brooks given in that still photo, that that it only depicted the back of that subject. And so the state came in and said, well, wait a minute. We need to we need to recall Detective Casey because we, there's a there's more than a still photo. There's video. So why is Dow Brooks so pensive of Detective Casey being recalled on that stand? What is he worried about? That lets me know he knew that there might have been a potential video. Mm. And then he going to try to debunk that saying, well, wait a minute. I didn't receive no video. Can we can we remember he asked the judge, can we is can we call prior counsel back? No, 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 no. We ain't calling. No, no, no. We're not calling prior counsel back to testify to that. Did you forget that you fired prior counsel in the person of Jeremy Perry? <laughs> oh, you didn't hear me. Oh. You fired him. We ain't calling him back. You were told that you were told in preliminary hearing by Judge Doro. If I give this is what Judge Doro said. If I excuse these attorneys. If I excuse Jeremy Perry 
from this case. You cannot. That's forfeiture. In other words, that's forfeiture. If you can't get them back. So if you can't get them back, then why would you ask the judge if we can have prior counsel come back to tell? No, 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 no. You forfeited that. You forfeited that. You stupid fool. Let's get back into this. An attempt to get questions that was maybe forgotten to be asked, answered. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. That's, that's not sufficient to prove otherwise. And essentially what... Shut your what mouth. What more could be gained by... He's trying to sound smart, but he dumb at the same time. You ain't nothing but a hybrid. Smart and dumb. <laughs> <laughs> a second testimony from Detective Casey. What's so what, called? What smart. more can be gained that hasn't already been learned? We learned about uh, vehicles and uh, identification. Shut and, up. By man. numerous witnesses. We, Shut we, up. We, we've been through the. Um, numerous witnesses that saw you drive through that parade. <laughs> the uh, inspection of the vehicle. We've been through. Uh, uh, DNA analysis of the vehicle we've been through. Which uh, points back to you? Numerous things in regards to the vehicle. Um, that makes you even more even guilty. The, uh, even the uh, reconstruction uh, testimony. We, we, we've been through all of that. Um, seems like nothing more than to get extra questions answered that could have been asked from the get no, what we're trying to do, because you opened the door, you questioned his credibility. So now we need him back on the stand. So that way we can present the other exhibit, which shows you in the video, mm. which is not to your to your satisfaction. <laughs> you know, as seen as how he, he was up there for quite some time. And, and, and none of those All right. You're repeating yourself. Shut up. Let the judge the significance at this point. Are you about to find out the significance? Let the judge speak. You're re you're in repetition. You're repeating. Shut up. Let's hear from Judge Jennifer Doro. Um, Shut up. When it's, Let's fast forward. I don't see the relevancy of it. And to my Let's opinion. fast forward. Go ahead. Go ahead. The court has discretion. Uh -huh. Under 90611. Exactly. Um, Authority. The statute I've quoted with frequency during the course of these proceedings. Um, I listened to the state's offer of proof. Exactly. I listened to uh, the objections made by the defendant. Which didn't um, make any discretion. I am going to allow Detective Casey to be recalled. Yes. Uh, for the reasons laid out by the state. Absolutely. Um, as I understand his proposed testimony today, it is not to rehash. Uh, topics that uh, he was questioned about initially. Uh, this has to do with his investigation and role uh, subsequent to the initial contact uh, with Mr. Brooks at the beginning of the parade route. And uh, as the state indicated, uh, we'll address certain things, including um, identification uh, related to the vehicle, of the driver throughout the investigation, identification of certain victims. Absolutely. Uh, in addition, there are two additional charges for which the state has not yet presented testimony, so it's proper for those as well. It's relevant. Absolutely. And um, I will allow it for those reasons. So the state will be able to recall Detective Casey. Exactly. And the reason why I believe that the judge sided with the state because they presented a cogent it cut what, what, what did I say? Cogent? No, this ain't Church of God in Christ. <laughs> cogent, cogent. That's what I meant to say. Cogent is C O G I C. No, no, no. We're not talking about the acronym. We're talking about the word cogent. And the reason why I believe the judge sided with the state is because they made a cogent offer. And Dow Brooks was repeating himself and he was stating things that was baseless that didn't have any importance or significance to why the judge should have changed or altered or even swayed in his direction. 
And a part of that makes sense because we have to understand that in theory, or theoretically, he is not an attorney. He's green. What does it mean to be green? Green means inexperience. He doesn't know. He's a neophyte. He's a beginner. He's still beta. He's beta. <laughs> All right. We're not going to go any further with this, but we want to hear from you, the audience. I love all of y'all. Y'all wanted me to talk about y'all love when I get on here and make mention concerning this fool. And I love when y'all say, oh, you've been saying the things that we've been wanting to say. And I listen, I understand why you can't say it. Because you don't want to be labeled as a racist. No, 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 no. Uh Uh-uh. You ain't no racist. Listen, let me tell y'all something. If you do wrong, I don't care what color you are. You're wrong. Listen, I'm black. If another black person does something wrong, guess what? I'm going to be on it. I'm just like God. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. And I know y'all probably wondering, what you mean you just like God? Well, what did the Bible say in terms of the description of God? The Bible says that God is no respecter of person. You know what that reminds me of? If he's no respecter of person, then that means he's no respecter of color. What am I saying? I don't care what color you are. I'm black. If you black, if you did wrong, I'm going to reprimand you. Mm. Oh, y'all didn't hear me. Mr. Brooks is black. I'm black. In other words, just because me and him is the same color or the same ethnicity doesn't give him a license or doesn't give him exemption. Mm. To go out and kill others. No. And this is why I said initially. When he said that he talked about his exemption. Hi. First of all, what does exemption mean? That means to be excused. So it means so you mean to tell me he get to kill six people and and to be excused from that? No. He's wrong. He's in error. And he deserves what he got. And in my opinion, I wish the state of Wisconsin would have had the death penalty. So that means so that so that way it could be equal. In other words, Jackson Sparks mother can't get back Jackson Sparks anymore. So let's make it equal with Dawn Brooks. In other words, let's do the death penalty. In other words, you killed my son. And so Dawn, your son got to die. So let's make it equal. If I got to deal with a loss, then why can't you? Exactly. And so guess what? Even though Daryl Brooks is in, he's captured, he's in prison. But I feel like that's that's really not legitimate equality compared to the loss that Jackson Sparks' mother endured and the Duran family and a whole host of others. So, audience, I want y'all to give your response on this. Thank you for the new subscribers. I love all of y'all. And I will give my opinion based off on what has happened. And what has happened has been a tragedy to these families. Thank you for listening. Please like and please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.